video about solid thinking compose. Today we're gonna take a look at Poisson equation and this is the 10th step of the 12 steps to Navier-Stokes. So we're really close. Let's get into it. So for a moment we recall the Navier-Stokes equations and we have um, the conservation of mass and the conservation of momentum as the two equations. And the problem is that we have not really a way to um, to put the pressure and the density into perspective with an incompressible flow. So within an incompressible flow, the continuity equation, so the first one, um, provides a kinematic constraint. And that requires the pressure field to evolve so that this expansion, or this rate of expansion, should vanish everywhere. And a way to do that is to construct a pressure field that guarantees that this continuity is satisfied. And such a relation can be obtained by taking the divergence of the momentum equation and in this pressure in this process of a pressure equation, which is the Poisson equation, comes up. So the Poisson equation is just an inhomogeneous form of the Laplace equation with a source term added over on the right side. So if you remember the Step number nine, Laplace equation, we have the sum of the second order derivatives equal up to zero, and now they equal up to a source term. And this source term could be anything, and we specify that to be a field, which has two spikes, the later to that, and the, the steps are the same as in step number nine, so we have the discretization, we have solving for p, but with the source term, obviously, and we use different boundary conditions. So no more boundary conditions like here, but we want to have P as the field we want to solve or to get. We have P zero everywhere, and on the edges, we say that P remains zero. So this is the first boundary condition, which is expressed over here. And the second boundary condition is the source term, so the source field is um, zero everywhere, but with two spikes, one is 100 and the other is minus 100. The first one appears at a quarter of nx in x direction and a quarter of ny in y direction. And the second one appears in three quarters of nx and three quarters of ny in the respective directions. And it's zero everywhere else. All right, let's get into the code. And for that, I have a compose window over here. So we have our parameters as always. We have our initialization. And now we have the source term here. And it's really just the same as step number nine. We copy our values P and PD. We uh, calculate for a number of time steps. We're not doing that with um, the converged state with L1 norm target. Uh, anymore, but we're just using that for a for a uh, specified number of time steps. We're calculating through our array and setting the boundary conditions. And we use the plot 2D function, which was first introduced, I guess, in step seven or eight. And we're using that at the end. So the the, the main program, you could call it, starts over here. Um, no, it does not start, but it continues over here. Um, after having set all the initialization values, we plot it. Uh, we, we plot, um, yeah, the the field. And where is the? Let me just quickly look where. Yeah, this is not defined in a function. It's defined in the main program, so we don't have to call it. We just use the the, the plot as a function again. All right, let's just take a look at it. So this is the equation or a state of p after, I guess, a hundred time steps. Let me just quickly check. Yeah, it's a hundred time step. Let make, let's make that, for example, 20 time steps. Should be much coarser. Yeah, see that it's, we just have one time step. It's just the initial condition where there's just two spikes. And let's say we make 500 time steps. Then we have more smoothly, uh, having this uh, field and let's say 2000 time steps. I really don't want to risk 
anything. Oh, 5,000. Okay, you can barely see the change. So, um, yeah. So the, the rates of, of changing get smaller and smaller, so it comes to a converged state. You, you could do that with all the same procedures with uh, step number 9, with a difference in, in those values and difference in change in aborting when the change is small, small enough. But we did that here with a fixed number of iterations. So you can play around with the spikes a little bit, maybe set the number not 200, but maybe 200, make it asymmetric, and see what, what this looks like. It's a pretty cool, cool uh, way to poke things around. All right, thanks for watching. And uh, if you have comments, questions, please leave, leave them down below. I'm happy to answer them. And yeah, see you in the next video. Goodbye.